A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw new heavens and a new earth. The former heavens and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no longer. I also saw a new Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down out of heaven from God, beautiful as a bride prepared to meet her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne cry out, This is God's dwelling among men. He shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and he shall be their God, who is always with them. He shall wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, crying out or pain, for the former world has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said to me, See, I make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the one who thirsts, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of life-giving water. He who wins the victory shall inherit these gifts. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. This is the word of the Lord. I got a letter that was uh, sent to me by his brother and sister who were unable to, to make it to the service tonight. Uh, they live in uh, Baltimore, and I want to share that with you guys. A tribute to our brother, Mark James Kinsell. October 24th, 1965 to June 7th, 2013. We're sorry we're unable to be here with you today as you mourn the passing of our brother. But just please know that our thoughts and prayers are with you guys. Most of you didn't know Mark as a baby, or even as a child growing up. So we'd like to, to give you a mini biography of him. When Mark came into this world on a beautiful fall afternoon, on Sunday, October 24, 1965, he was born the fourth and last child of John Clarence and Viola Ruth Kinsell. At the time of Mark's birth, his oldest brother, Bill, was 21 years old, his sister Peggy was 17, and his brother Norman was 12. As you can see, he was our late arrival, but oh, what a grand entrance he made. <laughs> he was a blessing from the very beginning, and that blessing never left our family. His smile was at that same. His smile with that same energy that was so infectious to all who knew him that he had for the rest of his life. Even as this is being read, you're all probably picturing his smile and you already have a smile on your face. That's exactly why we always called it Mark's infectious energy. And he would invite you to smile back. Mark had a typical childhood. Everyone knew he was spoiled rotten. <laughs> But he was so... Mark was an intelligent child. 
<laughs> and received good grades in school. He enjoyed participating in plays at school or at church. During summer vacations, he attended kids camp and enjoyed vacations at Ocean City, Maryland. He loved the ocean and swimming in it in other bodies of water. When Mark was in middle school, Mark discovered that he enjoyed playing the clarinet. He played that for several years and then switched to the alto saxophone. During high school, he would play in the school's marching band. And he, this band would go through synchronized movements while playing their, their songs. <laughs> and they even marched in parades. Even after Mark graduated from Southern High, his former music teacher called him several times to participate in these marching parades. He certainly <laughs> he certainly had a musical gift for whatever reason seemed to want seemed to wane as the years went by. As an adult, Mark worked for several banks in the Baltimore area for a number of years. Finally he realized that he wanted a career in something that he loved. Hair. He enrolled in cosmetology school and received his license as a cosmetologist. Who here hasn't had Mark do their hair at least once? <laughs> and although he lived, he lived in other states from time to time, Mark's move to Louisiana became the one they would finally call home. For almost nine years, from 2004 until his untimely demise, just a short time ago, Mark made so many friends in this beautiful place he proudly called home, but he never forgot his roots and never forgot his old friends. Now we're together with these very same friends, some old, some new, who are gathered here to celebrate his life and many accomplishments and a sad and unexpected departure from our midst. Thank you all for the love you shared my, with our dear brother. But most of all, thank you for the time you spent with him and the many, many laughs you all shared with him. Mark may not physically be with us, but we all continue to carry our own memories of him in our hearts. God gives us the ability to smile through our tears. We love you and miss you, Mark. Your loving brother and sister, Bill and Peggy. Now I'd like to ask uh, Catherine Koloski to come up. It's a very dear friend of mine. Say a few words. Okay. Hi guys, I'm Catherine. Um, I guess I want to talk just a little bit like how I met Mark. Um, I met Mark in 2005. It was like that day that every girl dreads that will never happen and it actually does happen. You get this horrible, awful haircut. This screwed up. It was horrible. The day before, I went to this new salon, which was hair asylum. I don't know if you guys heard of it. Fonty, Maine. I live right there. Um, evidently, the girls did a horrible job and I did not know about it. Um, and I was going to work right afterwards, so I went to work and one of my co-workers, Dana, I think it's back there, or Christine, um, asked me what the hell was wrong with your hair. Like, what <laughs> I didn't see the back, it was kind of a straight back. Um, so I put my hair in the ponytail and went to work, and the next day, I kind of walked by the window twice, because I didn't want to see her, I didn't want her to do it again, and Mark comes out, he's like, what are you doing? What's going on? Come in. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> I got all my girls to start going there, and many girls <laughs> fell in love with them, like we all did. He just had that uh, instant connection that we were all like just drawn to. Mark was there for like the first crisis of 
which was my hair, and ever since then, it's been there for me and probably a lot of people here, like, no matter what you need. I mean, if she, uh, Mark. I know, right? He's like, no, he's telling me to hurry. He's telling me to hurry up, Catherine. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, guys. Um, he was my best friend, but I believe that he was probably many best friends to many people here. And you just wanted to be around him. I never met someone more generous and full of life like Mark. If he had it and you needed it, he would give it to you, right? <laughs> and if he didn't, he would definitely like find some kind of solution. Get a fight with your boyfriend or your family. <laughs> your family. Um, just Mark being there just made everything better. It did. Um, I love him and I'm going to miss him. So that was just how I met him. It was kind of funny with the hair. I, I found this poem that I want to read and then I'll be done. Um, he never said I'm leaving. He never said goodbye. We were gone before we knew it and God only knows why. A million times we needed you, a million times we cried. If love alone have, could have saved you, you would have never died. Sorry. In life we loved you dearly, in death we love you still. In our heart you hold a place that no one can ever fill. <laughs> it broke my heart to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part of us went with you, and you'll never be alone. We hold you close within our hearts, and there you will remain to walk with us throughout our lives until we meet again. I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm crying so much. That's it. <laughs> yeah, she wanted me to come up I wouldn't cry. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Mark was my meaning of what Noah or New Orleans is to me. At first I was hanging out with Sean before I actually met Mark. And uh, and some time had passed and went by and the phone started ringing, all right? <sighs> he said, where are you? Don't you think you're spending enough time away from home? <laughs> it's time for you to come back now, don't you think? <laughs> I could, I could oh, like it was yesterday, I could hear him saying this over and Sean's trying to hold the phone. To the <laughs> because, <laughs> I don't know if he was embarrassed or he just didn't want me to really know more of him. <laughs> But I was thinking, this guy really is impatient. But, and I may not like him very much. But I was wrong. In fact, I learned in that, that moment what the true meaning of queen really meant. Right? When I would go to the house, everyone there was so much more to me. Mark had told me no matter what, whether, whether I was in my own place or not, whether or not I was with or without things, and whether he was mad at everyone in that house <laughs> and wanted everyone to leave, his, his exact words to me more than once were, you know when I get mad and I want everyone in this house to leave and tell them, I tell them, that excludes you, my brother. And my brother he is. I'll miss his laughs. I'll miss his meatloaf, his stuffed bell peppers, and his huge hunk of meat he'd buy every month and barbecue. <laughs> and everyone in that house had, had a home-cooked meal at least that night. 
Once a month, we ate as a family. I know what Mark wanted more than anything, and he wanted us all to be united. No one, no one got that, including me, until now. And Mark wanted no backstabbing or no talking behind each other's backs. Let's be honest, this group was his family. And in unity, we all had a common goal, and I think of Mark when I think of that. I'd like to ask everyone here, if you, if you want to, to join hands. And I'd like to say this little word um, from, but our Heavenly Father, Lord in heaven, I will be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. On April 7th, 2013, I was hit by F-150 pickup truck. 45 minutes prior to that, Mark was getting off a carnival cruise ship <laughs> that very day. It was eight weeks prior to his death. <clears throat> Boy, he had a welcoming. <laughs> As he found me lying on the pavement about to die. With no one able to get in touch with my parents or next of kin immediately. Of course, I wasn't, wasn't uh, exactly coherent at the time. Mark signed as my actual brother. And I went to ICU and went to immediate surgery. If it wasn't for Mark at that time, I may not even be here myself. And so he means more to me than, than, than anything in the world. He was my brother, and he always will be. And when I came to in that hospital after being five days of incoherent, when I came to, the first thing I saw was my mother, my father, Mark and Marlene. <laughs> I surely thought I'd went to hell. <laughs> you know, Mark meant a lot to every one of us. And he, in his own way, he was a brother to every one of us. There won't be a day that goes by that I won't miss him. We love you, Mark. We'll see you on the side. I'm so sorry, Mom. Chastity. 